Good morning, everyone. I hope you're feeling well today. Today is Tuesday, August the 2nd. It is uh, approximately 11.34. Uh, I'm reading from my old notes this morning just to give us an opening psalm. And this psalm I wrote down on uh, June 7th, 2013. It is Psalm 52. It is the psalmist. The psalmist is David here. Uh, for those of you who are familiar with King David, um, you, if you are familiar with King David, you generally know when it is among his psalms because he sounds always the same. Uh, and in this particular psalm, David is confident that God will destroy the wicked. And this confidence still um, exists today among the believers of God that nothing under the sun um, is new. And actually there are many things under the sun that is new, but if it is against the will of God, God will certainly deal with us in his own way, in his own time, whether you believe it or not. So let's start today with Psalms 52. And it says, Why boastest thou thyself in mischief, O mighty man? The goodness of God endureth continuously, and it does. Thy tongue devises mischief like a sharp razor, working deception. Thou lovest evil more than good, and lying rather than to speak righteousness, Selah. Thou lovest all devouring words, thou deceitful tongue. God shall likewise destroy thee forever. He shall take thee away and pluck thee out of thy dwelling place, and root thee out of the land of the living, Selah. The righteous also shall see and fear and shall laugh at him. It is not a laughing matter. I had to say that. When our godly father is forced to pluck us from among the living. Because it doesn't matter who he plucks. There are always tears. Even among the wicked. They, too, have people who love them. So it is not funny when these things are happening. It is quite sad. Because oftentimes, these are individuals are plucked from among the living at a tender age. 30, 40, 50. Those are tender years. Precious years indeed. And the worst thing in our days now is when we pluck the innocent child from the womb of his mother. The righteous shall see and fear and shall laugh at him. Lo, this is the man. All right. This is the man that made not God his strength, but trusted in the abundance of his riches and strengthened himself in his wickedness. Psalm 52, 8, But I am like a green olive tree in the house of God. I trust in the mercy of God forever and ever. Amen. I will praise thee forever because thou hast done it. And I will wait upon thy name, because it is good before thy saints. It is good for you to wait on God. It is good for you to be patient. It is good for you to even remind God every now and then. But what is not good, to take matters into your own hand. 
that is not good. When you do this, you're putting trust in your own meager abilities. Which is no trust at all. Alright, today we're going to be reading from John Still. And we're going to be talking about our Savior once again. Um, in this particular reading, which is coming from chapter 7, ladies and gentlemen, I do not, I feel like I need to say this to you, I do not select my readings at all. I let God select the readings for me. I let him do all the hard part, and I do the easiest part. And even this part can be difficult at times because oftentimes when you speak the truth, it has a bite to it. And I myself care not about how the bite strikes, for it is your own spirit that convicts thee, not the word. It is your spirit. All right? So don't get angry with me. Don't get angry with my God over his words because they are the truth. All right. In chapter 7 of John, it talks about Jesus' brother's disbelief. This was common knowledge that James thought his brother was a lunatic. He didn't think much of a, about Jesus Christ at all. Even though he was hearing about all these miracles and wondrous works that was done by the hand of Christ, none of that convinced James at all. James became convinced at the cross. So did many of some of us recognize our king. If he was to show up today, we would recognize our king immediately. The other half or three-fourths of the world would think it was Halloween time with special effects. Let's read about this. And in this particular chapter, it talks about James. It talks about the heavenly scholar. There's only one. It talks about the could it be, could it be Christ. It talks about Jesus and the religious leaders who recognized him not, and those few that did recognize him, like Nicodemus, would come to his Lord in the night hours to ask him questions. It also talks about the promise of the Holy Spirit. It gives you more detailed information about who Christ is. And it talks about being rejected by the authorities. It has a lot of information in this particular reading. And because it's such a long reading, we will not consume it all in one bite. All right, we will do the first 25 today. If the Lord is willing and I shall live, we will do the remaining the next time. Let's begin, shall we? Jesus' brother, disbelief. After these things, Jesus walked in Galilee, for he did not want to walk in Judea, because the Jews sought to kill him. Now, this man did nothing wrong at all. He went around rebuking demons out of people. He went around calling them back to life from the cave. He went around wakening up young girls. He went around doing good. But yet, the only thing the people on earth wanted to do was destroy him for the good that he did. But today, for the wickedness that the people do today, what do they ask for? Mercy. 
For the wicked, you ask for mercy. No one showed Christ any mercy. Now the Jews' feast of the tabernacle was at hand. His brother therefore said to him, Depart from here and go into Judea that your disciples may also see the works that you are doing. He's an arrogant soul at this point. For no one does anything in secret while he himself seeks to be known openly. If you do these things, show yourself to the world. For even his brother did not believe in him. Then Jesus said to them, and these are in red print. These are the words of our Lord. I am simply reading them to you. Then Jesus said to them, my time has not yet come, but your time is always ready. The world cannot hate you, but it will hate me because I testify of it that its works are evil. So anytime you point out to the world that their conduct, their lifestyle, their mindset is evil, you will not be liked. At all. For the truth is not sought after today. Deception is. Wickedness is. When does a servant of the Lord need to wear a $400,000 chain? When? When you don't work for the Lord, he does what he does best. He shames thee. In the presence of the congregation. So if you don't mind being shamed by God, keep up your foolishness. My time has not yet come, but your time is always ready. The world cannot hate you, but it hates me because I testify of that its works are evil. You go up to this feast. I am not yet going up to this feast, for my time has not yet fully come. When he had said these things to them, he remained in Galilee. In the same way that God marshals your steps, he marshaled the steps of his son. The heavenly scholar. But when his brother had gone up, then he also went up to the feast, not openly, but as it were in secret. Then the Jews sought him in the feast and said, where is he? And there were much complaining among the people concerning him. Some said, he is good. Others said, no. On the contrary, he deceives the people. However, no one spoke openly of him for fear of the Jews. Yes, there were many who knew who he was, who believed in what he was. And if they would have tried to touch Christ before his time, the riot that would have happened would have been of biblical proportions. So in other words, not only did he hide himself because time was not yet, but he also prevented rioting. Now about the middle of the feast, 
Jesus went up into the temple and taught, and the Jews marveled, saying, How does this man know letters, having never studied? Jesus answered them and said, Here we go again with his words. My doctrine is not mine. In the same way that this brother who was robbed in the middle of his sermon had the nerve to get on FaceTime, Facebook, or whatever it is, media he used, and said that he was robbed in his house. He was robbed in the house of God. Those houses do not belong to us. They belong to God. Your house is the one you sleep in. Every church on this earth belongs to Christ and his father. Period. Jesus answered and said to them, My doctrine is not mine, but his who sent me. If anyone will do his will, he shall know concerning the doctrines. You will be fully familiar with the doctrines of God. You will use them because they are your tools. Not your meaningless, meager words. They have no power at all. Whether it from God or whether I speak on my own authority, he who speaks from himself seeks his own glory, amen. But he who seeks the glory of the one who sent him is true. So when you're walking around in your church wearing million dollar jewelry, you're not seeking the glory of God, you're seeking your own glory. And no unrighteousness is in him at all. God is incapable of doing that which is evil. We can leave that up to man. Did not Moses give you the law? Yet none of you keep the law. None. Even today. This is why you have gay marriages. This is why you have transgestors. Whatever they call themselves. This is why you legalize abortion. Justifiable murder. This is why you cannot properly chastise the wicked in the land. According to the way God has written. For every offense, he gives you a punishment. If we will implement that which God has said for this action, crime would decrease. But God is working on it. That's why Wade versus Roe, 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 whatever that law is, is no longer in existence. Don't blame the judges or the Supreme Court. If you want to know why, just look up. God has done this thing. And he's not finished yet. Did not Moses give you the law, yet none of you keep the law? Why do you seek to kill me? The people answered and said, you have a demon who is seeking to kill you. Arrogance. Jesus answered and said to them again, red lettering. I did one work and you all marvel. Moses therefore gave you circumcision. That is not that it is from Moses, but from the father. And you circumcise a man on the Sabbath. If a man receives circumcision on the Sabbath so that the law of, the Mo of Moses shall not be broken, are you angry with me because I made a man completely well on the Sabbath? 
How backwards is that? Do not judge according to the appearance, but judge with righteous judgment. And this is what these judges did of the Supreme Court. They made a righteous decision. But we are in a wicked world. Righteous not favorable anymore. Wickedness is, deception is, murder is, greed is. But this world does not belong to us, brothers and sisters. Let me remind you that we are just pilgrims here for a little while. This world belongs to God. And we are doing a wonderful job with polluting it. But through God, he is working it out among his people. So stop blaming this person and that. Blame the one who makes things happen on this earth if you have the nerve. Do not judge according to appearance, but judge with righteous judgment. Period. Let me do a few more. Could it be the Christ? Is it a bird? Is it a plane? Is it Superman? Now some of them from Jerusalem said, Is this not he whom we seek to kill? But look, he speaks boldly and they say nothing to him. Do the rulers know indeed that this is truly the Christ? However, we know where this man is from. Yeah, we know. We know his father is Joseph. We know his mother is Mary. He lives next door to us. Sometimes we can know too much and know nothing at all. Even in the biblical time, this, men, this mentality existed. And it's even worse today. Total confusion. However, we know where this man is from. But when the Christ comes, no one knows where he is from. Then Jesus cried out as he taught in the temple, saying, You both know me, and you know where I am from. And I have not come of myself, but he who sent me is true, whom you do not know. But I know him, for I am from him, and he sent me, period. That was the truth. The same man that spoke these red words will one day make his second appearance. And it will not, it will not be in the same way that he came. If you don't know how to look up now, you better start practicing. Because that's where he will be coming from. We're going to stop here at 29. And tomorrow, if I live and nothing happens, we will continue the rest of this story. Thank you very much for listening to us here at Spiritual Water. My name is Brenda Guerrero. And as always, I say this to you all the time. May the peace of God be upon you. May the protection of God surround you and all those you love. And may the will of God, whatever God's will is for your life, let that be manifested. Until the next time, my friends, brothers and sisters, have a beautiful day. And don't forget to spread love, kindness, goodness, 
and mercy. Love you. See you again.